We are once again diving back into the 80s to finish off the Brawl Crawl's earliest digital adventures. As long as you don't count the villain cameo in the Revenge of Shinobi. Yes, this was a real thing. Welcome to Does Whatever a Spider Can, in which we take a look back at the webhead's long and varied gaming career and find out just how much they replicate Spidey's signature powers. First up, I wasn't originally sure I was going to cover this game, as it isn't technically a pure Spider-Man title. However, this is Spider-Man's third ever game, and it is interesting because it's also the very first time Spidey shared the spotlight with another Marvel character, and it wouldn't be the last. Spider-Man and Captain America in Doctor Doom's Revenge is a 1989 game developed by Paragon Software and published by Paragon in the US and Empire Medalist in the UK. Like most games of this era, it was developed for multiple systems, notably the Amiga, Commodore 64, DOS, ZX Spectrum, Atari ST, and the Amstrad CPC. Each system had its own different take on the game, mostly due to each system's capabilities, but they all functionally play the same. The basic premise is that the player controls either Captain America or Spider-Man as they attempt to infiltrate Doctor Doom's castle in that area. This is to stop him from blowing up New York with a nuclear missile, which he apparently stole from the US as well. Each level typically consists of beating up a villain in a single screen fighting style, reminiscent of games such as International Karate Plus, with some occasional mini-games. The game brands itself as a unique, interactive comic book arcade game, which it achieves this through a multi-panel comic on screen. But this basically means that you select a panel to access the next segment of the game. The game came with an accompanying comic book in the box that acts as a prequel to this game. The comic itself isn't bad, pretty much on par for a short 80s tie-in comic. There really isn't much more to say about this game because it's kind of unplayable. I've tried this on every version I could get my hands on and they all play badly in practically the same way. First off, the biggest issue with this game is the hit detection. No matter what attack you do and from what distance, it just seems like damage inflicted is by random chance. There appears to be two types of attack. You mostly use short range attacks due to proximity of the enemy, but if you're far enough away, you can use a long range attack. This naturally is either Captain America's shield or Spider-Man's webbing. As this was back in the day when there's only one function button on a joystick, you perform varying attacks based on holding it down and pointing in a direction. This is quite ambitious for the time and many did try it, but it ultimately feels too clunky especially when dealing with such a bland game. Next there is this bizarre challenge stage where you're supposed to dodge these fireballs. A simple concept that is just poorly executed. In the DOS version of the game, there are just two floating balls that go back and forth with no real pattern and they are next to impossible to dodge. Jumping over them doesn't work most of the time as the jump animation appears shorter than their move animation and the controls don't help either. And don't even bother trying to crouch. Ultimately, this stage just seems to be put in to drain your health and that's about it. Oh, and when you complete it, you just get one hit by a walking camera. Not sure if there's anything to do with difficulty, but it's cheap regardless. A better version of this utterly puzzling challenge is seen on the Amiga, where you're locked into a walking move cycle but can jump and crouch quite easily. This functionality does technically make it easy to get through, but it actually makes it feel like a game and not a cheap excuse to lower your health. Oh, and we haven't even got to Spider-Man yet. This is mostly because you don't get to choose which hero you wish to proceed with. Not that this really matters because functionally, they are almost exactly the same except Spider-Man has web fluid that the game takes great pains in warning you that you only have 100 shots. This warning is kind of pointless as you have a bar to track your shots, so it's not like you need to keep count. Trust me, with how long you'll play this, you won't go through it all. I'm not sure if it's the bad hit detection or game function, but Spidey's hits don't seem to do as much damage, and he doesn't take as many hits as Cap. I guess not having a shield doesn't help, but maybe that's why he steals one 27 years later. Although it might help Cap more if he held it less like a garbage can lid. You might be wondering why I'm not showing more of the later levels, and that's because to be pretty honest, I didn't want to play more than this than I had to. I would love to show you more examples of the other bosses and the poorly drawn artwork, but between the hit detection, pointless energy draining challenges, and the slow gameplay, I just didn't have the energy to try and get through this one. Oh, speaking of poorly drawn artwork, I can't help but think the splash screens make Spidey look like a creepy red jack-o'-lantern. 
At least he doesn't have Captain America's manga eyes on the PC, or his constipation face on the Spectrum. This could be a new troll face though. The sprites themselves aren't too bad, and there are some technical limits for the systems they have to deal with, but there are just some inexcusable anatomy gaps that just boggles the mind. This game also has no music, and depending on the version, just some really bad sound effects. The most unintentionally hilarious one is the Amiga version sound when you select a panel. <laughs> All up, this is probably the worst Spider-Man game this exists, as even the Atari 2600 and Quest Probe have some playability behind it. I get a sense they were trying to do something new and interesting, especially as the idea of an interactive comic book could lead to some interesting possibilities, but the end result is just an absolute mess. So I'm not really sure I need to ask if this game does whatever a spider can, because it's obviously no. Even if you manage to hit something, there is no discernible display of spider strength. You can jump on the walls, but you can't move if you do, so it's almost utterly pointless. The weapon doesn't serve much except as a projectile, and as it also doesn't do much in the way of damage, it feels as pointless as the attacks. Finally, there is no spider sense, unless it's drawn on a panel at some point, but I don't care enough to try and get that far. I've tried to give this a fair go, but it's as horrible to play as when I first played it so many years ago. I guess the only reason I kept this game was for the comic as part of my collection, otherwise it might have been binned a long time ago. Fortunately, it gets a little better one year later when The Amazing Spider-Man gets released by Paragon Software again. Oh boy. Okay, it was only published by Paragon and was developed by Oxford Digital Enterprises. Yeah, I've never heard of them either. Although they apparently made the computer game times for, yes, Prime Minister and The Hunt for Red October, as well as Space Ace? Oops, sorry. They just made the Super Nintendo conversion. The game was originally for the Amiga before being ported to DOS, Commodore 64, and Atari ST. I remember as a kid being excited because of the comic book style figure of Spidey on the screen and being able to do the cool things like shoot web and crawl all over the place. And then I played it. Before we begin, let's quickly talk about the manual. It's presented as a flyer for the wannabe Universal Studios with the title Welcome to Rockwell Studios Tour before ruining the illusion with the Spider-Man logo. This makes sense as the game's main antagonist is Mysterio, and the game is set in a giant booby trap he's created harkening back to classic Hollywood tropes. In the manual you'll find a letter addressed to Peter Parker, stating that Mysterio has kidnapped his wife Mary Jane, and if he ever wants to see her again, he'll get Spider-Man to confront him. Oh silly Mysterio. You just needed to wait 17 more years and Mephesto would have done the work for you! A neat little idea for the copy protection was that the manual gave you some basic biographical information on Spidey, Mysterio and MJ and asked you some simple questions. So yes, the premise is as simple as moving through a movie studio trying to find your way to fight Mysterio and save Mary Jane. Simple. Well, naturally it's not. That's simple because there are many traps and baddies to avoid and subdue. The control system is okay, although sometimes changing angles when climbing on a wall can get annoying. Your only attack is your web line, but this only stuns enemies for a short time. However, you will still take damage from them if you hit them. The web line can also be used to swing around and climb to reach different platforms, which most of the time you can easily attach to and walk or climb around. The web line is also handy for shooting at switches, and you'll find there's a lot of switches, and this is the most common puzzle in the game. If you can tie right, you can actually swing to get around somewhat faster. And the challenge is just enough to keep you going without getting too bored. Each screen has a theme and a name at the top of the screen, mostly puns based off old classic Hollywood movies. Mysterio sure loves his cinema. This game also features some interesting bad guys, including mummies, werewolves, Ross Snowball, Marvin the Paranoid Android, and even R2-D2. Is it ironic if they're now both owned by Disney? Remember when I talked about that cool Spidey on the side? Well, that's your health meter, and when it goes down, holy sh! Yeah, that does kind of freak you out, and probably one of the most mind-scaring health bars for any young child. Typically, health bars are an abstract concept used to help the player determine how badly they are damaged, but not this game. The more damage you take, the more you literally turn Spider-Man into a skeleton. And as there are no health pickups, you'll see this visage slowly corrupt itself as you constantly fail at life. It's kind of the perfect metaphor. Thankfully, it takes an incredibly long time to lose all your health, but as there is no invulnerability, you'll also manage to lose more than you bargained for. So all up, this game doesn't sound so bad, right? Well... To the best of people's knowledge, there is no legitimate way to complete this game. It is just figuratively impossible. This game is a quite literal maze, and you're constantly finding yourself trying to move to an area out of reach in the screen. 
and you'll go crazy backtracking and puzzle hunting trying to get to that part thinking it must be the way forward. But no, 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 it no, no, no. There are even articles where people have gone absolutely crazy trying to find their way through it, but to no avail. Just a lot of dead ends, trapped areas, frustration, and potential hair lost. But not as I said, no legitimate way. Thanks to an article on scary-crayon.com, there is an exploit where you can actually save Mary Jane, and it's all through an easy to find easter egg. If you avoid the blandly obvious trapdoor on the first level and continue to the top right of the screen, you'll find the helicopter. Normally what happens is you climb on top of the helicopter and if you're in the center when it reaches the top you'll hear a bleep and when you climb down you'll find you're on the screen called Mysterio's End. Here's where you'll see that there is indeed an end screen. Mysterio's there, Mary Jane is seemingly held by invisible ropes and an obvious entry point to the lower right of screen. Knowing this exists makes it even more frustrating to try and find it and I'm betting the developers had a great time drinking the tears of frustrated gamers. So, how do you get down there? Instead of dropping down after the helicopter lands, after you hear the beep, you jump and try and swing across as left as you can, and then try and straighten up as much as possible before you land. It might take several tries, and a lot of failures, but if you catch it right, you'll fall through the girder and land at the bottom of the screen. I actually did this as a complete fluke when I was practicing around. I then saw the gap next to Mysterio and figured, bugger it, I can't be arsed fighting him. Climbed through it, moved on to NJ, and the game glitched out and crashed. Turns out I was supposed to hit the switch under Mysterio, plummeting to a shocking death. Don't worry, he got better. After that, you climb up, go over to NJ, the game starts glitching out again, and then voila! You end up with the end screen of Peter and MJ running around in love with Spidey's face unmasked. Don't worry, you'll just have to sacrifice your love and marriage to undo it again. As stated, it's not a bad game, just an impossible and frustrating one. It's still got some playability to it and pushes you in the right way to get you pissed enough to continue. So the big question we've got to ask is, does this game do out of a spider can? For a game this size and scale, it replicates things good enough to warrant a yes. Once again, no spider strength or spidey sense. But you can crawl around, you can swing, and you can do all that kind of funky stuff. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, comment, send smoke signals, replicator, caveman chalk drawings, and befuddle archaeologists uh, for years to come, and all the other usual gaff.